I'm Jules Mock. I'm a painter. I live in Venice Beach. I did graffiti for probably the first 10 years of painting. You don't really know where it's going to land until you do it a million times. For the first five years, I would only write my name. It takes like so much time to develop. And people would be like, oh, can you write my name? And I would be like, I only know how to write M, U, C, and K. And that's all I know. But I started painting in Greece and uh, then in New York and England. And then when I came back to America, I started getting arrested a lot. But I, I was really good about fighting cases. I never copped anything. And I would just keep going to court until like everybody stopped going. And like the cops would disappear, the freaking evidence would get lost. I was really rigid until I met Lady Pink. I very much respected her art. She came up to me, I was so intimidated by her because I'd seen her in books. and and what she had accomplished going from being a subway graffiti writer into museums. She took me on as an apprentice. I was learning, it takes a long time to learn how to work with spray paint. She'd be like, here, fill this in, or here, paint this, and I couldn't say no. So I learned how to paint, and I started painting with brushes instead of cans. When she started kicking me my own jobs, and I started becoming a working artist before I even knew that was what I wanted to do. When I was a teenager, I, I felt always left out and alone, and the only way I felt good about stuff was to go put my name on things. And it also introduced me to this whole subculture where I could be popular before I even met you. So I would run into these groups of kids and they'd be like, oh, Mark, oh, Mark, oh, and like they knew me. And I felt at home and I felt accepted. And I really just like to communicate with other people. So I paint and it sparks like these conversations between me and the rest of the world, the rest of my community. And that's what I love about it. I never was able to follow through with anything else. I would always get pulled back into the graffiti or into the painting. And even as I got older, I remember at one point being like, I, would, I wanted to be a mechanic. I wanted to be a doctor and I would go do that. But always something would come up like, I got a show at the Bronx Museum of Art the same week I had finals and I had to decide. And in the end, I always picked the art and that's why, uh, that's what stuck with me. Keep me searching for a heart of gold. You keep me searching and I'm growing old. Keep me searching for school graffiti way where you do like your fill, your outline, your 3D, your highlights. That's all you need to know about art. And, and I got in with like old school cast, the TC5 crew, Case 2, Smith, Buzz. I got in with BTC and we went out to destroy murals. Like we were not in it for art. We were in it to get up. Sometimes we would have different methods of getting our paint. But sometimes we'd be able to rack the paint. We would go rack up Similac and then go sell them at the bodega and then take the money and go buy paint. And I had an automatic family. And the thing about that was I had automatic enemies. Started to get gnarly and my friend Steph, DCC, got shot in the back and killed over the graffiti beef. It's been since then that I don't put up crews. In late 99, I started it making my piece into a monster. I was writing muck and I made it this green monster. I, at that point, was a really disgusting looking person. Like I was covered in paint all the time, baggy clothes, ratty hair. If I was running around the hood, I looked like a man. You wouldn't even know. So I was unattractive and that's, you know, it fit my name, Muck. I kept doing the greens in this curved style. I picked up that from Blue. Blue was a writer from Sweden. I started hooking up with the Belton color. And I noticed when I got the right ones, which I use Seek Future, Mr. Green and Grasshopper, that it's not a natural green. It's not a green that you would see in the environment. It's supernatural. And that's why when the landscape of New York was covered in graffiti and it was all these colors and everything, and I did this shaded spectrum of green, it popped out like an alien life form. So I started doing these portraits of all the female graffiti artists that I respected. I painted Lady Pink first, because she was my mentor. And I did Faith 47 from Africa, and then I did Blue from Sweden, and I did Shiro from Japan. First time I painted at the Wall of Fame, I did a green girl, and they invited me to come back the next year and organize an entire female wall. Got caught up with the whole 
I'm huge, I'm great. And I started getting high all the time. And I, it became more about the drugs and the graffiti. And I used the skills that I developed as an artist, I used them to get money to buy drugs. And so I was painting corny shit that I didn't really respect and it felt like crap. When I got off drugs and I concentrate on my art because that's my real high and that's, that's what I want to do. Nowadays, I still use green because that's what I know the best. People always come up to me and they're like, you know, somebody's biting your style. They're, yeah, but I'm like 20 years ahead of him. So he could bite it for the next 20 years and 20 years from now, I'll be even better and I'll always be 20 years ahead of him. So that's what I do the best and I keep doing it. I was awoken by the first plane hitting the towers. When the second plane hit, I was up on the roof. I saw people jumping off the Twin Towers and I was very affected by it. And the way I processed what happened is I started painting the images. One of them was Bush getting whispered to and I painted some of the victims, I painted some of the firefighters, I painted some of the women that were back in Afghanistan and, and I painted Osama Bin Laden. The photograph I used was on the cover of the Times. When they started putting him all over the media and being like, it's his fault, it's his fault, he did it, he did it. They were just blowing him up because nobody ever heard of him before that. And I painted him with his eyes in the position of Jesus Christ and that's what my commentary was. Not really many people got it. A lot of people were yelling and spitting on me. I got chased with that painting. And later I had it in my parents' house and I don't know who saw it. The painting got stabbed. The painting's big. So people were like, you have a larger than life-size portrait of Osama Bin Laden, like I'm worshipping him. <laughs> you know, like I'm part of some cult. Homeland Security got involved. And at the time, I knew they were coming because they called and said they were coming. I was like a full-on junkie. So my whole fear was like, I'm gonna see my fucking drugs. I thought, maybe I should alert the press. But I was too strung out. My dad answers the door and he's got this full beard. He's Greek with an accent. Oh, hello. You know, it looked like we were fucking terrorists. And I was like, this does not look good. And so all I could do was like, don't come upstairs, I'll bring it downstairs. <laughs> but I came and I was like, oh, you know, I also painted Bush, the president, and I brought that down. And actually, they were really cool about it. They were like, oh, you're a good painter. They didn't threaten to arrest me. They just wanted to see it. They said somebody reported it. And they wouldn't tell me who either. Who snitched on me? One guy tried to buy it at a show. He told me he wanted to buy it so that he could destroy it and I wouldn't sell it. <laughs> the original is still at my brother's house. I moved to LA and I started painting a lot of pop artists. But with the celebrities, I wasn't really hurting anyone, so I figured it was okay. So when I moved to Venice, it was right around like Venice was getting crazy with the gentrification, and uh, Lindsay Lohan moved to town and I painted Lindsay. And people were writing me like hate mail, and nobody got it, it was just a joke. You know? Somebody put a swastika on it. I fixed the swastika right away but uh, I eventually had to remove the piece. So no matter what, you upset somebody. You know? I even got interviewed on this like uh, Daily Beast and I started getting all this notoriety. But honestly, like I tell you, I just paint what I see. I paint Bush, I paint Anna Nicole. I painted Marilyn Monroe more times than Osama Bin Laden. I paint what is in my face. And this is my way of communicating. That's all I ever try to do is communicate with people.